Kano's Assemble! Hey, Kersley, and welcome to the K-News episode of the century. We're going to start off with a story from Sue Tippett. And we'll end with a story from Kelsey Stokes. And in between, there'll be a story from Kaylee Paul. Well, let's get this show on the road. There are many children around the world who are in need of a home and a family. Now, because of the decision and effort of a local household, a 12-year-old girl from Guatemala is one less. What led them to this decision, and what was involved in this process? Let's find out more. We had felt that we were very blessed and we had a large enough house to hold another child and that we could offer love and a home to a child who wouldn't have one. So we had chosen to um, open our home to a child and looked into the possibility of adoption. Our adoption process took us two years from the time that we started until the time that Lorena came home. It involved a lot of research. We researched the countries uh, that we could adopt from um, it involved a home study. The adoption process can take months, and in this case, years to complete. Getting a new child involves a lot. But now that the process is over, what does having a new child involve? Well, one extra person in the family. That means uh, more seats in the car. We need a bigger table at a restaurant. We don't have any leftovers at the dinner table anymore. Uh, but uh, just on a positive side, uh, it's just one extra happy kid in the house. And it's nice to see her grow and to be able to show her love and concern. So it's been a real positive thing. Overall for the Johns family, adoption has been a positive experience. Josh Johns, a senior here at Kersley, elaborates and explains a difficulty. Uh, one of the more positive things out of, an, out of adoption is you get to enhance someone's life. You get to make it better than what they've gone through, seeing pictures of the orphanage and stuff that, I take for granted every day. It's like she didn't even have. Probably one of the most difficult things is when Lorena came, it was hard for me to talk to her because my two years of foreign language wasn't exactly sufficient. Lorena, the 12 year old who was adopted from Guatemala, has had a lot to adjust to, such as language and family life. She explains the difference between her home in Guatemala and her home here. It's casi igual, pero. I think she's adjusting very well at this point. Having been here a couple of months, she's learning English. She does not speak well enough to, to talk with everybody. But she's adjusting well. She's adjusting to family life, which she did not have before coming to live with us. Now that everyone is adjusted and the adoption process is complete, has the experience and decision been worth it? I, mean, I didn't really know exactly what we were getting into in terms of the adoption process, the length of the time, the amount of paperwork, and so on. Uh, but it's looking back on it now, it's, it's really well worth it. And I would encourage anybody that if they're thinking about it, not to be discouraged by uh, the expense or the weight, but to pursue it. It's, it's, a, it's a real positive experience. There are many things we can do to help out the world we live in. Adoption is an option that could enhance your life and the life of someone less fortunate. So talk to your parents, weigh your option, and if adoption is not right for you, there's always volunteering. Get involved, Kersley. Reporting for K-News, I'm Sue Tippett. Thanks, Sue. And now for a K-News special report. We searched high and low for the best drinking fountain in the school. Maybe this story will quench your thirst for knowledge. Students in the school had their secret spots. Everyone has one, so what is your favorite drinking fountain? My favorite drinking fountain is where the 100 hallway ends and it meets the 300 hallway, the drinking fountain that just got put in there over the summer right by the boys' bathroom because it's the perfect level for me. I don't have to bend over too much and I can just, I can press press it and uh, some cold water will come out to meet my lips and it's just incredibly satisfying water. I like the science wing drinking fountain. It's cold and refreshing in my mouth and it's not yellow like the other ones. 
Um, I really just like the newer ones that down in the science wing and by the new bathrooms because the water seems to be colder. Uh, this is my favorite drinking fountain because it's really refreshing, cold, and I like to think of it as the fountain of youth because it's this really dark hallway and then there's just this one light that shines down on the water and it's just, it's like God's drinking right with you. For my favorite drinking fountain, uh, there's three buttons on there and there's two on, the, two on the sides and one in the front and if you hold all three, then it gets the best, coldest water in all of Kersley High School. Some students may disagree with this. My least favorite drinking fountain is the one by the front of the school because I filled up my water bottle and it was yellow. But how far will students go to get to their favorite drinking fountain during the day? I go on my way if I'm really, really thirsty to drink out of the fountain of youth, but I mean, especially after a long practice, after running, I'm really thirsty, I'll definitely come here. Sometimes if I'm really thirsty, I'll make a little side trip down this hallway instead of taking the short way. Josh Engel says he always tries to make it to his favorite drinking fountain because of the other's bad taste. After that one, I don't know if I could necessarily say I have a second favorite because the water tastes different on different days. Like some days, the drinking fountain will give you a weird aftertaste or the water just doesn't come out right and it, it just gets my spirits down, so that's not my favorite drinking fountain for the day. Whether it's in the front of the school, the back of the school, or you think nobody's found it, we all have our favorite drinking fountain whether you realize it or not. Reporting for K-News, I'm Kaylee Paul. Well, that was a refreshing story. It, it made me have to go to the bathroom. Don't go yet. We have a story on adoption next. <laughs> but we already have that story. No, no, it's a different one. About Kersley students who are adopted. I can barely hold it! Every year, millions of children are put up for adoption, not only in America, but other countries too. Amber Dorner tells us about her experience being adopted from Korea. I was adopted when I was about a month old and I um, lived in Seoul, Korea and I actually arrived when I was four months old in October of 91. Her dad and I had tried to have a child on her own and we couldn't so we um, had heard about um, FAC, it's Family Adoption Consultant, and we called them up and they gave us the information and we went through them, but first we went to see if we could adopt through the United States and stuff, and it was between 10 to 15 years process. And so we found out going through Korea was only a two year process, so we went that way. Amber's mom explains the process for adopting a child from overseas. Uh, we first had to write an uh, essay, my husband and I did an essay on um, uh, how our family raised us, if we believed in spanking, punishments, and um, stuff like that was a big report. We sent that in, and then they gave us uh, okay. Um, then we went fingerprints. We had to go um, be checked by the FBI and the police and all that stuff, you know, um, just to make sure everything was all right. When she got here, we were she was four months, three days. And then um, we seen our um, social worker she came to see us four times through the year. And then she was adopted, or she was a US citizen within the year. Despite being on the other side of the world, Amber's parents thought that it was important that she try and stay in touch with her culture. Um, my parents, um, they like enrolled me in Korean culture camp, and I went there for like four years. And they taught us about like, language like you know how to say hi and bye and they also taught us about like like food and social things once she turned like four years old my dad had read a paper or a newspaper saying that they had a um, Korean culture camp over in Fenton so we enrolled her in that and she went with uh, and went there for four years and met a lot of friends and she's friends with one of the girls right now still Amber says that growing up, life wasn't any different for her than somebody who wasn't adopted. Well, I always knew that I was adopted, so when I was growing up and stuff, like, it wasn't, I didn't think I was, like, weird, because I didn't look like anyone else, but um, I kind of got, like, treated weird, because I was Asian, like, people were, like, upset. My parents were adopting an Asian, like, not an American, and, like, I met a lot of friends who are adopted, too, so I guess we kind of relate to each other and I'm still friends with them. Now that you know more about Amber, maybe someday you'll consider adapting too. Reporting for K-News, I'm Kelsey Stokes.
Oh, Alex, I don't think I can hold it any longer. All right, I guess that's all the time we have for this week. Tune in next week for Kersley's Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Be good and be safe, Kersley.